Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to participate in this convention as one of the speakers in the forum. And also, uh, I would like to mention a little bit about my organization. I present Ankasa. And Ankasa is the apex body for the cooperative movement in this country. So Ankasa is the spokesman for the movement in this country and will present the Malaysian cooperative movement at the international level, that is International Cooperative Alliance. And I happen to be in the board of ICA as well. So I'm very happy to know that uh, my friend here and our chairman have been in the uh, cooperative uh, spectrum. So from very young age, I'm very proud to have very distinguished people in the uh, organizing committee who are in the cooperative uh, historical background. So I know we have been talking about networking, we have been talking about interna internationalization, but I would like to say for sure that cooperative is a global business enterprise. It is having networking all over the world. For your information, in, in the whole world, we have the first, the biggest 300 cooperatives. And in the year 2008, the th 30 biggest, the 300 biggest cooperatives in the world, if you combine, total up their turnover, is about 1.1 trillion USD US dollars, which is equivalent to the size of the 10 largest economy in the world. That shows how big and how huge is cooperative business in this world. Now, yesterday, uh, our Excellency First Lady mentioned that innovation is a business, is business too, which is very right. And I want to say that cooperative is an innovative and creative business enterprise because companies have been in the market for almost 200 years and it has gone through and passed, overcome lots of crises, lots of challenges and lots of competition, not only within the movement but also from other models of business. Now, I would like also to mention that cooperative has a different way of doing business. It is focused on human need, not on human greed. That's the difference about cooperative business compared to the other model of business model. Now, cooperative is a member-based organization whereby the members are the owners and at the same time, the members are also the clients and customers of cooperative. In other words, cooperative naturally is a market or customer-oriented business organization because they are all in one. They are the owners, they are the shareholders, they are also the customers and the users of the organization. So in other words, Cooperative is very different and is very unique. Now, I would like also to say a few words why women seem to be, or why cooperative seem to be women friendly. Why we have the title here, significant con business, significant provision of cooperative movement enhancing women in business. That means. Maybe there are certain characteristics and values in cooperative which can empower women in business. So I would like to show the slide here, slide number seven. Okay, before this. 
declaration. Now, it seems that I will read here. For women, companies have a key role to play as they are able to respond both women's practical and strategic needs, whether it be through women-only companies or companies made up of women and men, they offer, companies offer an effective organizational means for women members and employees to raise their living standards by assessing decent work opportunities, <coughs> savings, credit facilities, health, housing, and social services and education and training. And we have heard yesterday our Excellency uh, First Lady said most of the women lack of confidence, lack of knowledge, lack of training. So, Corporate provides the means to assess all these opportunities. And Corporate also offer women opportunities for participation and influence over economic activities. Through companies, women gain self-reliance, self-esteem through this participation. Companies also contribute to the improvement of the economic, social and cultural situation of women in other ways, including promoting equality and changing situational, institutional biases. So that's how corporate is the right organization to empower women in business. Now, we now go to Malaysia. We are now in Malaysia, so I would like to come to Malaysia, how the coffee started. It started in 1922. It's about uh, 60 over years. Yeah. So, but globally, it started in 1844 in Rochdale, Manchester, United Kingdom. That's where it began. began. So it is already 167 years, so almost 200 years. Now in Malaysia, what's the situation of women cooperative, women cooperatives? Now out of seven, uh, out of 28.3 million, this is figure in as of June 2011, quite recent. So 28% of the Malaysian population are members of cooperative. It's about 7.9, maybe now it's only 8 million. Now out of that, 40% are women. So we are almost half the uh, population of property uh, uh, among the women. It's about 3 point something million. Now women are involved in companies in two types. One, in a mixed company, for example, teachers' cooperative, consumer cooperatives, government service cooperatives, whereby the membership are both men and women. The other one is women are also involved in specialized 100% women members' cooperatives. So when we talk about women, they are involved in those two types. But this morning, I'll be more concentrating on women participation in women cooperatives, 100% women members. Now look at the statistic of women in cooperative business in this country. There are, uh, there are figures for three years, but I would like you to look into the present year, 2011, as of June 2011 this year. The number of co-ops in this country is about 8,000, but the number of women co-ops is only 178. So, that's not much to be proud of. And uh, their yeah, share capital is about 17.82 million ringgit, and their total assets is about 101.07 million ringgit, and their turnover is about 26.08 million compared to 21.88 billion ringgit turnover of the total uh, cooperatives. Now, among the 106 78 women corps to top 10. So this may be worthwhile explaining uh, more in detail. Number one is Koputri in short. This is Wanita Amnu, uh, the, the, the younger one, Putri, Putri Amnu. So they set up this corp uh, with a, uh, they started in uh, 2006 with 100 members and now, and that figure uh, shown is at, at November 
2010. So it's about 28,000. But for your mission, the latest figure now is already 36,000, the members. So it's a big cooperative, women cooperative. And the beauty is, uh, we are talking about innovation, we are talking about creativity, and yesterday also, our first lady said, we are, women uh, business normally very comfortable with traditional business activities. They should transform uh, into global market, that's what she said. And uh, in this particular example, Corporate Tree, they have ventured into new business activities that we never thought of. One of them is they have and they own, they run medical center. So at Madame Tuanku, it used to be uh, Sambi Clinic, so they took over. So this is an innovation for a women corp to run a medical center. And they also have, of course, social obligation. They have Tasca, Tadika, child care centers in different parts of the town. Uh, they also provide credit facilities for women who want to go to business, to do business, or maybe to send their children to universities. So these are some of their activities that has enhanced them in business in this country. Now, if you look at the table, their asset is about uh, 38 million now, and now their income 28 million. So maybe after one year, now we are reaching the most uh, end of this year. Maybe they have increased more. Now the second highest is Koprashi Shabaguna Kaum Ibu Kubang Pasu, and it's doing manufacturing. Now this cooperative has been in the country for many, many years. They started from a group of women, housewives, in a village in Kubang Pasu, Kedah. At that time, Kubang Pasu, the population are mostly farmers, paddy growers, and they are very poor. But they managed to grow into a very successful cooperative. Remember, they are 100% women. The women own, the women govern, the, the women run. It's a multi-purpose company. It has consumer, it has restaurant, it has also processing and refreshing coffee. Kopi Ibu, uh, that's their brand. So, we are very proud to have such an industrious and very uh, creative women in the property. So their assets are about 3 million and income about 1 million. One million. Now the third one is Koprasi Jaya Modi Wanita. And this is Wanita Amnu, uh, the, 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 the veteran one. The younger one, Koputri. So the other one, Jaya Modi. And this is Koputri also has been in the market for some time and is involved in investment, you know. Metro Jaya, so they have some investment there. Electcom movie, they have some investment there. So they have also a shop now uh, in Kampung Baru, near the, the stadium. Uh, used to be a CIMP, I don't know whether it's still there. So, uh, they are involved in, in investment. You have number four. Koperasi Rancangan Tanah Beliawan is Bukit Mamban involved in transportation and Guru Guru Wanita involved in services Koperasi Wanita Islam uh, Kelantan in services and so forth These are the top 10 Now, next I would like to talk about what we are doing to ensure that women are empowered in business As an apex body we provide several programs to women. Nowadays, most of the, uh, some of the men in our, in our company women are questioning why you have special program for women. We also would like to be in those programs. So, so, so now we have already uh, also uh, invite the men to join into our program. So it's a gender issue, it's no more male or female, men or women. So uh, some of the things that we do 
we have uh, conducted educational program for women uh, in the various management field. So we have on communication skills. So just now we are talking about networking, the importance of communication. Talk to people, but you have to have the strategy. How you do it? First impression is very important. Yesterday I attended one of forum. First impression is very very important. So it's got, we, we teach them the communication skill. We also teach them how to manage uh, your business, how to administer your business well. Because uh, firstly, we said um, women lack of knowledge in business planning, in business management. That's why they are very slow. Uh, they cannot compete with other business. So we train them in that area. Internal audit course is to do with finance, training of trainers program in leadership. So sometimes the women they have the knowledge, they have the know-how, but they lack the leadership quality. So how to be a good leader, effective leader? We train them too in that area. And also we train women entrepreneurship development. So we have few programs coaching them in different areas of industries. For example, they have bakery shop. How do you develop your business from small to medium size? How to expand your sale? Workshop on bakeries, beauty, therapy, spa, and so forth. Now, we also organize seminars from time to time to address common issues, such as working from home. So this is uh, the in thing now because women have multiple responsibilities and duties, so they cannot just leave their children at home and go and work somewhere. So we organized or we taught them or we exposed them some ideas how to still involve in business but you don't have to leave your house. Then we also organize seminars on health talks and workshops on health it is very important. Yeah. A healthy mind comes from a healthy body. If you are sick, you cannot think well. You cannot focus, you know. So you have to be fit. So we give them uh, some uh, teachings or talks, information on how to look after your health. And. Uh, from all these seminars, uh, example, working from home and health talks, we are producing uh, books, small books. The first one will be launched uh, very soon on Petua uh, Petua Orang Lama. Uh, so we would like the women uh, to practice or uh, to uh, amalkan Petua yeah? Petua Lama so that they can take care of themselves and take care of their family. Now, networking exposure programs, again, networking. We organize study visit, by, uh, we organize and we also uh, uh, become hosts uh, from the Iran, the Iranian Women Cooperatives in uh, 2004. We also, uh, together with ICA, organize a regional women's seminar and working networking program in Bangalore. We also have study visit with, uh, uh, to Singapore. Uh, on child care in uh, 2007. We also sent our women officers and also men officers to ICE Idaho in Japan. Now we also organize an entrepreneurship program for women in food production and child care center. At the moment, we have 107 child care centers under our, uh, co our coaching, our supervision. So uh, very soon, we are going to launch not really franchise, but penyeragaman. We have uniform, uniformity in the at least the signage of the child care centers, uniformity in the uh, guidelines, yeah? uh, their modules, they must implement whatever modules is in the book prepared by Jabatan Kebajikan Masyarakat, and we also have a uh, uniform, we are going to introduce a uniform. They should not look sloppy, they should look professional and clean. So this will be launched very soon. Now, Ankasa also celebrate International Day of Rural Women Celebration. 
And uh, <coughs> every year we have different team, and this year our team is claim your right to land and inheritance. So this is very common among the underdeveloped countries. Women have no say at all in the properties once they are divorced, once they are left by uh, by their husbands, they have nothing left. So we would like to give them uh, some information, some guidance on how to protect themselves or claim their right to land and inheritance. Now these are some pictures on International uh, Day of Rural Women, some of the activities we have during this celebration. We have normally workshops, seminars, study visits, and so forth. Now, one of the seminars which is very uh, popular now is working from home. Uh, so we invited uh, people who are doing this, working from home. We invited three ladies, one doing spa from home. She started the business from home with two babes. And now they have, he, she managed to have a shop in town, from home to town. Now we also invite a lady who is doing cakes, making cakes from home, and you know, she received a lot of orders from corporate bodies. From one corporate bodies is around between twelve to fifteen thousand. From one, you can imagine how many corporate bodies, international organization during Hari Raya, during Christmas during New Year, so you earn money from home. So much business opportunities. And also we share experiences, uh, like these are the ladies we invited because they are really doing business from home. Uh, and the other one is catering. Tiffany Keller, now those days you, uh, for example, in the city, uh, the ladies mostly are working. When they come back, they have no time to really cook. So they order during the weekdays, they order Tiffin Carrier. So business in Tiffin Carrier catering is also flourishing. So it's, except this time they don't use Tiffin Carrier. They look uh, like Tupperware or plastic container. Now we organize tea talks as, as I mentioned just now. Uh, these are some of the workshops we conducted for women to keep them fit. And they undergo uh, basic uh, examination, health examination to see how their blood pressure, sugar, uh, glucose in blood, and so forth. And we have certain exercises we have to do. And we have talks on health. And these are some of the income generating programs organized by Ankasa. Uh, you have a craft tangan, craft work, a batik, you have a crepe pisang, a potato chips, banana chips production, and you have also bakery, uh, and so forth. In other pictures, you have so uh, money showing all those uh, glittering on your uh, dress, on your scarf. Uh, so yesterday, uh, not yesterday, a few days ago in the paper, three young ladies, they work together from home, they produce the scarf. They produce the scarf and now they have, uh, I think, Suratus Pekerja, workers. Fantastic. Three young ladies in the range of 20s and early 30s. I cut that paper, I should have brought it here and read to you. From home, and they have uh, workshops. They don't have to have boutiques to do business. Now, we have child care center. This is, this is Ankasa's child care center. We use this as a training uh, for those <coughs> Interested to set up child care center, they come for attachment and for training. Uh, so we conduct courses for them. And here, pictures on next, preparing, preparing nutrition uh, food by child care operators. Now, next, I'm going to show you more about this corporate, uh, an example of successful corporate, women corporate. The Koprasi Putri Terbilang Malaysia Berhad, in short, Koprasi. Now, these are some of the activities. As I said, this is the medical center in the right in the city, uh, Medan Tuanku. Daycare centers, 
uh, in various parts of the uh, city also. And they have beauty centers, they have their own beauty product um, with their own brand, Antara. It's their own brand. So, fantastic. They also have a scholarship for education, and they also have travel agent and other uh, co services like credit facilities. And this is a photo of their uh, activities. The medical center, next. Yeah, daycare centers, next. These are beauty centers and spa, and they have their own beauty uh, product. So, now I would like also to mention a little bit more about what is going to happen next year. The United Nations has declared 21, 2012 as the International Year of Cooperatives with a key, cooperative enterprises build a better world. So this is to raise the public awareness of the, uh, the uh, presence of cooperative enterprise and how it has affected and influenced positively to the people in the world. Thank you.